let's show you how to organize your media if you're working on a production. All right, let's first of all go over uh, showing you how to update your copies and backups of, of the files that you're working with. So I've got, and I tell people oftentimes, and I've said this once before in my tutorials in this playlist, that if you don't have three copies of something, it doesn't exist. Uh, the general rule for, uh, for backing your files up is you have uh, your files uh, backed up on three different hard drives and sometimes, oftentimes, in three different geographic locations. Uh, somebody may decide to keep it on a server which is in a completely different location than the building, the production building that you're working in and then you have it on a local hard drive in that production building and then sometimes people will put it on another hard drive and take it home so they have it in three different geographical locations in case like the building burns down or somebody breaks in and steals stuff you still have backups and copies of everything, uh, at least two other copies of everything in two different locations. Now when it comes to backing up your media there's a few ways to consider here. If you're working on a larger production you probably need to get what would be called an array of drives here. Array drives can be on a server or it can be on a, an actual kind of uh, tower where you have several hard drives in the same system here. Here is something that here is a server room that has a ton of different hard drives that, that, that creates basically a server. Oftentimes these have what are called, what's called a gigabit uh, connection where the media can be delivered to a separate location uh, fairly quickly as if the, the, uh, just as if the hard drive was local or plugged into the, into the computer itself. You'll see these in, in larger studios. Now, if you're working on smaller projects, you might w wish to back up uh, projects onto, onto separate hard drives. Now, if you look up hard drives, uh, the SATA hard drives are the what, what I like to call spinny hard drives. These hard drives are ones that uh, have a disk inside them that actually spins. These have moving parts, but the, uh, the benefit of getting one of these types of hard drives is that they are more affordable. Oftentimes, like right here, you see on Amazon, you can get a six terabyte spinny drive, as I like to say, because they spin uh, with the moving parts at 90 bucks, which is a ton of hard drive space for a very, relatively for a relatively low price. Because if you do a solid state hard drive, if you look up solid state hard drives, oftentimes a terabyte is going to run you about a hundred bucks. So this is more expensive for one terabyte than and the other hard drive. You got six terabytes for for ten dollars less than that, which is a very good price. So if you're just using it for backups, uh, these ones are a lot faster, but you might want to consider using the SATA hard drives just because they're way more affordable and you can pack a lot more onto them. If you are using either solid state or the SATA hard drives to back up your your footage. I'd recommend getting a hard drive reader. A lot of people call these toasters. They look like a toaster where you grab these hard drives. Some of them are compatible with both solid state drives and the SATA drives where you can plug both of these together. You can plug these in and then it's usually a USB 3 or a USB C connection that you can plug directly into your uh, computer and you can back your footage up to a SATA hard drive or a solid state hard drive. If you feel rich and you want to get a solid state hard drive and it's a lot faster, then you can do that as well. But this is what they call a docking station here. I like to call it a toaster, but they, basically you can plug your hard drives into there, plug the cable into your computer, and then you can transfer your backups to these hard drives, and then you can take these hard drives out and just put them on a shelf, put them in a safe location where you can have your the, the backup for your media. All right, so for this project here called Check Now, I'm going to go into that here, and I've got, got the, the, the files that have been copied over. This, this production is finished. So we have 10 days of production here. It's 10 days of footage that were, sh were shot on different different days here. But first of all, I'm going to show you how to make sure that things are backed up and that they're copied over. Right now, we are missing days 3 through 10 on this right here. I'm not going to take the time to copy all those over, but I'm just going to show you the basics of how this works here. Now, I'm going to show you a few different pieces of software that can be used for this. The kind of the lowest level that's actually actually free, this one you can find in the Mac store, and I'm sure there's one for Windows you'd have to search. I, I mostly do this stuff on a Macintosh. I oftentimes edit on a PC, but I'm more, but with all, all the organization, I'm usually working on a Macintosh. So, a free software that I use is called Compare and Sync Folders. This is in the Mac App Store, and it's free. It does have uh, paid versions which do, does a lot more but for basics here making sure that you're that, that a specific folder has the exact same file uh, you can use this uh, copy and sync function right here right here this a and b version right here you, you, you're going to look at this little item right here that's got this a and b it says drag then drop the folder to path for two different folders here what this is does is going to do a comparison run a comparison between two different folders and make sure that they're, they have the exact same items in it and if not here are the parameters here that you can set this is the default right here is making sure that it's taking it's reading a and if it has extra files that have been put in there it's going to make sure that those extra files are added to the b location here. So, so if somebody has taken the folder and added more information to it, let's go under this uh, day one folder right here. And we've got an audio and a film folder in here. And I'm going to grab a file here. 
I'm just going to grab this random file that I have on my desktop. I'm going to grab this and drag and drop it into this day one folder. And let me show you. I've already copied this day one folder over. Here's my day one folder right here. And we have the audio and film folder. Same thing. But now let's say somebody adds this to the original production folder right there. It's just a video file. Okay, that's been added. And now, so these folders are different. This one does not contain that extra media that was shot and stuck in that folder. So the person that's organizing the media is going to open up the software and we're going to go, I'm going to bring open my finder folders here. I'm going to say, this is my A folder right here and it is actually going to be day one. This is my A1 day one folder right there. I'm going to drag and drop that over to A. I'm going to go to day one over here. We can cancel this as like to create a documentation based on what you're doing. And then I'm going to go to day one here and I'm going to drag that to the B location right here. Cancel that. So it's going to read the day one folder and it's going to add, and this is going to add, so it will not take any footage away uh, from the B folder. And, uh, and so if you did stick stuff in the B folder that, that is not synced, uh, it's not going to delete that. And now I'm just going to simply hit sync up here at the top. And there it goes. All right, and it showed like it shows all the footage here. And it shows what was equal here, and it is, and then it's got a little red thing down here to show everything is green. Everything was equal down here except for this, and now it has transferred this drone leaves over from A to B. So if we go there, this has now been synced. If we go to day one folder, there it is right there, and these two folders have been synced. So what I could do here is compare these uh, these two folders here that have not had days three through ten and all these other folders copied over and compare it to this folder right here and it will add all those. That way, say say these folders were all transferred over and then we added ten uh, day ten, it would read these folders and then it would uh, transfer day ten over to this folder and then everything would be synced and copied. There is some software that you can pay for that's a little bit more advanced and, and does a little bit more. One of those that I've used quite a bit for the smaller projects is Chronosync. This works really well. This reads uh, two different folder locations. It tells you the differences and asks, asks you what you want to do. This is really good for syncing and backing up folders. And this is a paid one. You pay for, uh, for about 50 bucks for that version of it there. As you're getting a little bit more expensive, DITs tend to use uh, software like uh, what's called Hedge. This is what they call checksum software, where they, they, they have uh, a professional has to run this basically to make sure that you have copies and a D DIT does is a digital imaging technician makes sure that all these copies are backed up. They use these uh, more serious software like Hedge. Uh, Yoyota is another one that's a really popular one uh, that's used to do the, all the syncing and backing up on a big professional production. But those ones are, of course, going to be more expensive as well.